All right, guys, welcome to the sermon. Um, and as you're about to find out uh, by seeing and hearing, that I get real excited when it comes to God's Word. God's Word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I have no doubt in my mind that's God's promise that you'll be blessed by hearing God's Word. So uh, sit back, uh, get comfortable, uh, whatever you need to do, and enjoy the sermon. Amen. Now you see why they called it Bold Cross Cowboy Church over there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. I got that. Praise God. I got some really good stories about me and Steve going out. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, oh, man. You know what? Normally I get up here and pray and... Uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm just going to ride on what Pastor Steve said. Amen? Amen. Is that okay? I um, got the table out today because I um, got some stuff over there. It, it helped me understand more of what I believe the Lord is trying to show me. Um, and hopefully it does. Y'all, how many of y'all like visuals? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. That's good. All right. Um, Last couple weeks when we, we had the American Fellowship Cowboy Church's um, uh, school here, a uh, word kept ringing off in my mind, and that was the word heritage and uh, what it really means. How many of us will, will hear a word and we assume we know what it means? And then when you look it up, you're like, oh, I wasn't too accurate on that. Amen. Or you knew what it meant. You had a ballpark figure of what it meant, but you didn't have a complete definition of what that word really meant. Amen. Um, and it reminded me of a scripture. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will call back to your remembrance scriptures. And he does that for a reason. So if there's words, you're a born again Christian, there's, it sounds like a scripture running off in your mind. Either get with somebody, call somebody, or start looking up in your Bible because the Lord's trying to tell you something. Amen? That's one of the ways we, we know that the Lord wants to speak to us. How many of us know that the Lord didn't save you just to keep his mouth shut the whole time and never speak to you? Amen? He wants to speak to you. Obviously, it's, it's most of the time through the written Word of God. Amen? And if you feel like the Lord is speaking to you and uh, through the Holy Spirit, always make sure it's confirmed through the Word of God. Amen? Um, because the Holy Spirit is never going to contradict the Word. Amen? Does this make sense? All right. Well, it reminded me of a, an Isaiah scripture, and you don't have to turn to it. I'll read it real quick. Isaiah 54, 17. And some of y'all have heard me say it up here. It says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn um, Pastor Steve was praying that he was showing that in action while he was praying um, it says you shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me says the Lord first off when I read that he reminded me that there is nothing of us that makes us righteous there's the only thing that makes us righteous is Jesus Amen. The only thing that makes us righteous is Jesus. And it also said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So the Lord reminded me, he says, hey, I have a heritage I want to pass down to you as a child of God. And I want you to say this also to the people. Why? Because when I looked up the word heritage, it started making more sense. The definition of heritage is a possession, something to take with legal claim to. See, when you're a born-again Christian, you have legal claim to certain things within this Word. And if we don't know that, then how can we know to go get it? Amen? The, the, that's the word heritage. And then if you look up the word inherit, it's the actual act of receiving that heritage. To take possession of what is being given to you. So we can have a heritage and never touch it. Amen. We can have something sitting there and this has been passed down through the generations to the family, to the family of God. And you, but you have to one, first acknowledge that it's there and then two, stand up and go take it and keep it for yourself. Amen. Have you ever heard um, a really churchy person say, no, I claim that in the name of Jesus. You ever heard people say that? When I first started hearing that, I was like, what are you talking about? You claim that in the name of Jesus. 
Well, heritage is something I have legal right to. And they know the scriptures say that through Jesus Christ, they can claim that as their legal right as a joint heir to the throne. Amen. See, Jesus didn't just die for our sins. He then turned around and gave you everything that belongs to him. Amen. As a joint heir to his throne. Amen. And then he started showing me my family and what's been passed down through the generations of my family. And y'all be praying for me because when I use stuff, I mean, they can go right, left, they can go sideways and... And it's, if you've ever prepared a message or given a message, sometimes it gets kind of hard to work through all that. So y'all pray that I, I do this correctly and I make it simple to understand. And uh, anyway, y'all just be praying. Amen? <laughs> Praise God for Cowboy Church. You can just say it. Amen? Well, I got this up in my barn and... and, and you know, one of the things that kept me out of church? I'm a big old crybaby. I always want to be tough and rough and all this stuff, and I throw down what you want to fight. I do all that too, just like everybody else likes to do that. But I get embarrassed because I cry like a little baby. I didn't like to go to church or funerals. I'd be at a funeral and not even know the person. I'd be crying. He'd be like, "How'd you know?" I'm like, "I didn't." <laughs> I, I, that's one of those things. I'm like, "Man, does this does this ever quit?" <laughs> Lord, to change your heart, amen. Because it used to be hard, and I used to not care about any of it, but why I say that is because um, about a month ago I almost threw all this away. Just mad, being a big old dummy. I almost threw it all away and my stepdad said, don't, you don't need to throw that stuff away. It's, it's, uh, he's talking to me about, no, you need, you'll, you'll appreciate that. You'll want to pass that down to your kids. And I, you know, being dumb, I was mad. Anybody in here got a temper? Anybody in here working on it? Boy, I hate to make this church mad. <laughs> got a whole bunch of dangerous people in here. But anyway, this is sitting in my barn. And I called the old treasure chest, and, and uh, the Lord told me to go get it. And uh, I started to want to clean it up. He said, no, you don't clean it up. People, when you come into church, you ain't cleaned up spiritually. See, sometimes we get off the wrong impression that we need to get cleaned up before you come to church. I don't know about y'all, but the Lord met me where I was at. All jacked up. He met me right where I was at. And praise God, He's a God that does that. But some of the things that have been passed down in my family, um, the Lord showed me some stuff. You know, a heritage could be a physical thing. Or it can be a, a spiritual thing. The New Testament talks about the definition of heritage is not only a physical possession, but it is also a spiritual possession. You can claim spiritual things. This was passed down to me from my daddy. Um, it was my great-grandpa's rifle that he traveled on a covered wagon and traded food for it. How cool is that? And my daddy gave it to me. He said, Jason, this stays in the family. Well, obviously, that was a big yes, sir. Amen. Um, but it has an octagon barrel, and anybody that likes rifles, you'll understand it. And um, I can't hold this thing and not think about the men in my family who's gone before me, who are now no longer here. And now there has to be some point in time in a man's life that he needs to make the mental transition to say, You ain't no longer looking to daddy you are the daddy and you need to stand up and start doing the things for your family that, that, that they did for you amen that makes me remind me of that and uh jason i'm not throwing that in my office so there's a rifle one of the things passed down through my family another thing that was passed down through my family was um here i'll get this one was my name. I didn't go get that name. Amen. How many of us, when you see your name or you hear your name, something kind of perks up in you? Right? There's something about you, the family name that just perks up. And uh, how the spiritual parallels in all this is when I'm adopted into Christ's family, He has a name. 
Praise God for this. It's the name above all names. Amen. Amen. By which men must be saved. And the Lord showed me saying, just as your family had a heritage, so does my family have a heritage. And people need to see that. Amen. Because so often we can come to church and it seems like it's getting on the family and, and cutting it up and quit doing that, stop doing this. And, and the Lord's wanting to speak through us through our, even our own families. Amen. Now I know there's a bunch of cowboys in here. And and, uh, but I got this. I was raised more country than cowboy. I was raised watching my daddy in a, in a rodeo arena. I remember chasing the calves at the calf scramble. Amen. And getting mad because I wasn't as fast as all the other kids. And even when I got up to it, you know, how to time it just right to get the tag. But what also reminded me is that um, my family's passed down to me. You say what you mean, you mean what you say. If you're going to make a deal, you look a man in his eyes and you shake his hand. Y'all know that God, when He makes a deal, He's serious too. And He wants to look you right in your eyes. Amen? That's passed down through the family. Guys, y'all know this is a cowboy church, right? And sometimes it's going to get real, okay? So if I start pulling out certain things, just know that there's a little bit of warning at least. Amen? My family always reminded me of time and how precious time is and that you might not be here tomorrow. I don't know how many times I've seen death. I don't care to see it anymore, but I know I probably will. And uh, every time I think about if I was in their shoes, they woke up that morning, they brushed their teeth, they got ready, they took a shower, got dressed, they went down the road and didn't know that they wasn't going to come home to his wife's cooking. He didn't wake up thinking he was going to die, but they do. My family passed down to me that you live your life like it's the last day you're living. How much more of life would we live if we literally took that into consideration? When I was in the army, <laughs> This is the real, one of the real parts. They make you carry your own toe tags. Yeah, tell me that won't be a reminder. There are soldiers right now out there carrying their own toe tags. Every time they pack it, it's a reminder that they might not come home. That makes me look at the soldiers a little different, amen? Y'all know that the Bible talks about soldiers of Christ. And today could be their last. And they go home in glory. What did Paul say? To live as Christ but to die as gain. Amen? Imagine that medal of honor. Whew. Mm. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. My family has a heritage of fighting these are my old gloves. I used to put on and try to purposely go hurt a man. And they hurt me too. Amen. But the family passed down to be a fighter. Praise God for this. My family also passed down the Word of God. Amen. Amen. To pray and ask the Lord to bless the food before you eat. I don't think my mom knows this. But just how she lives. She has passed down a heritage to me to be nice. Be gentle. And praise God, I need that now that I have a three-year-old little girl. Amen. <laughs> Four generation of all boys and you get kind of crazy rough. Amen. <clears throat> My family taught me to to work, get off your butt and go to work. 
Don't be lazy. Don't be mooching. Don't be getting stuff off people. You work with what you got. Amen? And we need that reminder because it is so easy to be lazy. Amen? How easy is it to be lazy? That doesn't mean if uh, somebody wants to bless you, you let them bless you too. Amen? These some old antique spurs. The Lord showed me through these spurs. These are from my daddy. Is that we should respect our elders. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. If you don't think that ain't in the Bible, you're sadly mistaken. It is biblical to be respectful to people older than you. Amen. This is what I love about the Bible. It is the final authority on all things. And it says, honor your father and your mother. Guess what it doesn't say? Honor your father and mother until you got your own family, then you can just be mean to them. Doesn't say that, does it? Honor your father and your mother only if you agree with them. It says honor them. Amen. And I know there's some jacked up relationships. But ask the Lord. Go to the throne and say, Lord, I can't stand that man or that woman. You know my heart, so I might as well not lie to you. You teach me how I can honor that person when I don't even want to be around them. You know what he'll probably tell you first? He says that that road, the first step is to forgive them. I love what Pastor Dwayne preached a couple weeks ago on forgiveness. He said, forgiveness has nothing to do with a feeling. You forgive them because the Lord forgave you. Amen? Respect our elders. Don't fall asleep. My family taught me to serve something bigger than you. Amen. You know what? If you're a soldier or have been a soldier, would you please stand? I'll give him a hand. Amen. This is a 48 star American flag. Passed down from my wife's grandpa. And it reminds me that uh, to pray for my country, to serve my country, to support my country, as long as it's biblical. Amen. What does the Bible say? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but render unto God what is God. What belongs to God? Everything. Amen. We pray for our leaders. The blue reminds me of loyalty and how we should be loyal to Christ even in the bad times. The red reminds me of the blood that the people who have died for this country, people literally gave their entire life, if not their family, so that we may be free, live in a free country and come to church on Sunday and drink coffee and eat donuts and have a good time. Amen? The white reminds me of the purity of Christ and how I cannot in and of myself be pure or righteous. It must be covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? There is nothing in me that is good. The only thing that is good is Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. If you love America, say amen. amen. Praise God. It's okay to be a patriot. Amen? amen. Alright, how many of y'all got perfect families? <laughs> I don't either. So this is the part that might get a little real. Amen? Remember what we're talking about, a heritage, something that has been passed down through the generations. The Bible says that very clearly. It says the sins of a father are passed down to three or four generations, but the blessings of a father are passed down thousands of generations. That scripture all by itself shows and proves how gracious our Lord is. If you jack something up, he said, I'm just going to revisit the family the third and fourth generations. He said, but if there's something that your family did good by the Lord, I will visit thousands of your generations within your family. You can't tell me the Lord doesn't love family, amen? Because He has a family. And we've got to be adopted into that family through Jesus Christ.
How many of you feel like sometimes your family or you yourself are carrying a whole bunch of chains, a whole bunch of weight of all the issues that are in a family? I love the book of James. It says, if you're breathing, you got problems. That's a redneck translation. I'll remember the scripture. So if y'all know which scripture that is, y'all remind me after church. But I know it's in James, and I'll show it to you so you don't think I'm just being silly. But the chains of all the stuff that keeps our families down. Anybody in here got a hard heart or a hard head? Don't want to listen to nobody. Just a few people in that section. <laughs> My family has a heritage of broken family divorces. Y'all remember what a heritage means? It means passed down, but guess what? You don't have to inherit it. You don't have to go take possession of that. You can stop it with the blood of Christ. Amen? And guys, when I start pulling some of these out here, don't think I'm having a condemning sermon. Amen? I'm showing you what my family has issues with, and if it hits you just right, that's between you and the Lord. Amen? Because there's some things that I'm still struggling with. My family's got alcoholics in it. There's a point in time in the Norton's life that beer took over. That whiskey took over. We'd go party and have a good time with anything and everything. That's the truth. This is an old trap. And Satan, I believe, is standing at honky tonks and clubs just waiting to trap folks with cold beer and whiskey. Am I saying that's a sin? No, I'm not. I'll tell you what the Bible says about drinking. It says wine a mocker, beer a brawler. Whoever's led astray by them is a fool. Right. Amen. It says, there's a scripture that we're coming to that I love because if you're not careful, we'll start feeling self-righteous and thinking we're doing certain things when it's actually the Lord that delivered you from it and you didn't do anything. Amen. But the traps we put ourselves into, it's an old coyote trap, varmint trap. Boy, it's not real. <laughs> There's probably some police somewhere out there. <laughs> Dope, meth, crack, cocaine, acid, marijuana. Dope. No good. It's gonna kill you. Don't think it won't. You want to find something that does not discriminate, get you some dope. It'll kill you just like the next person. Matter of fact, it'll, what it normally does, it'll slowly kill you and have you drag down people with it. Dope's no good. It's a heritage passed down with many families and it needs to stop. Amen? Amen. You got a bar of soap. Anybody ever had that in your mouth? <laughs> the Nortons... This is a red hot pepper. Probably out of all these things, this is the one that gets me in trouble the most, my temper. When my temper goes, that needs to really, I need to put that in my mouth as soon as I do. When an Orton gets mad, they usually blow up, fire hot mad, and then they start just saying vile crap out of their mouth. I hope, I pray in Jesus' name, that the Lord heals us of these things. Amen? Amen? Now, a heritage passed down through the generations. Now, as a, as a full-grown man or as a believer in the Lord, I have a choice set before me. How many of y'all know that the Lord gave you a choice this morning? You can either come to church or you can stay at the house. 
Amen. You have a choice today. Our days are full of choices. Amen. And I can either acknowledge these things are in my life or I can ignore them. Amen. And there's many more. I know that every one of us could have tables all over this church and we could fill these tables up with good things and bad things. Amen. We're all sinners. We all need the Lord. But now as a man, I have a choice on what I want to now inherit from my family and now pass down to my children and have a heritage box waiting on them that says, if you want it, it's yours to take. But if you don't, you don't have to take it. How many know that one of the greatest things the Lord lets us have is a choice? You have on what to do in your life. Amen? You have a choice to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or deny Him. You have a choice to stand up and serve Him if you want to. Amen. You have a choice to sit there. This is last night. I had a choice. I'm sitting there on the horse going, I need to keep my mouth shut. I'm about to go in this arena with this cow. How, do know, how many of y'all know that that's, that's a scary thing? Amen? The ones that do it all the time, it's really not too scary. But that's a scary thing. You have a choice. And uh, how many of y'all believe we also have a church family? Amen. Amen. And the name of our church is King's Trail Cowboy Church. Amen. Amen. Now let me say this and clarify this. Because I've had people come up to me and say, Man, I'd love to come out to your church, but I ain't a cowboy. I'm like, well, you heard it all wrong. You heard it all wrong. Amen. It is a cowboy church, but that's just like a banner or a, a, an, an advertisement, like a, a flag saying, hey, you are welcome here. Amen. Amen. And what it, when it comes down to it, if we continue to go after the cowboy, or the cowgirl, the one that spends the most time in this thing right here, it attracts everybody. Why? Because people love that life and that mentality. Why? Because they do say what they mean and mean what they say, even if it's not popular. Amen? They speak the truth. Amen? If you don't think... Lord, Lord if you're breathing, the Lord wants to save you. Amen? doesn't matter if you're a cowboy or a corporate businessman. It does not matter. The Lord died for you and he wants to save you. So I say that to, to, so everybody knows that everybody is welcome in this church. Amen. Obviously everybody is welcome in this church. And don't feel insecure if you're not cowboy or cowgirl or country or anything like that. You keep coming. Amen. Amen. Um, amen. But what I was... When I was going over the heritage part, if you look around you, the Lord tells us many things. And uh, does not a car need an oil change? Does not a tractor need to be worked on every once in a while? Does not a computer need to be rebooted every once in a while? Does not sometimes we need to be put in check? Amen? Me, I felt the Lord telling me as a pastor, do not drift from this saddle. I've called this church to try to find and locate and preach the gospel to these people that spend most of their time in that saddle. Amen. Amen. And then this is what he started showing me. Guess what these boys are usually surrounded with? Cold beer. Whiskey. Traps. A hot temper, broken families, hard heart, filthy mouth, dope. And if you don't think they ain't got a brotherhood, you're sadly mistaken. They have a code and they'll recognize you real quick and call you out. Amen. But that's Satan's trick to keep them bound up and let them think. There ain't no church people love you. You're dirty and ain't nobody want to be around you. You cowboy, get out. Take your hat off in church. Clean your shirts up. Tuck your shirt in. Clean your pants up. This church needs to be a church where everybody is welcome. Amen. amen. This needs to be, amen. This needs to be a church. That we don't need to do this. This is why I said earlier, it's not a condemning sermon. 
Let me read one scripture to you and I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's 1 Corinthians 6, I believe. Chap uh, chapter 6, verse 8. Hmm. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. We'll go to 11. It says, No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? How are we righteous? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's not Jason. That's the Bible saying that. Amen? amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Now verse 11 is where we get in trouble as Christians. We forget that the Bible also says this. And such were some of you. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. He's saying, you were jacked up too. Quit pointing your finger and just love on them. You jacked just like the rest of them. The only thing that made you righteous was Jesus too. Amen. Amen. So this is what we better not do. Boy, it makes such a difference. We don't go, boy, look at that. He doing that dope. Look at that. He's always drinking. He got a filthy mouth. He ain't going to be around him. His house all jacked up. He's always up in the club. And you know what? He's got a pig head. He ain't listening to nobody. I'm just going to stay away from him or her. We don't do that. This is what we do. We love on them. Because when I look at that beer and that whiskey, I said, that was me. And I look at that soap, I said, I have a filthy mouth still if I ain't careful. Amen? I don't know about y'all, the Lord corrected me in between services and He says, don't you dare let people leave here thinking they're condemned on something because they have struggling issues on trying to get over something. Jason is still trying to get over this one. I'm telling you at the truth. As I leave these church doors, I have left here. Praise God, hallelujah. And I mean every second of it. I love the Lord. I think it's very apparent I love the Lord. Amen? It's very apparent that I serve the Lord. But when I leave here, Satan can jump on me, and I'm ready so hot, man, I'm ready to just cave somebody's mouth in. This right here is what Jason struggles with. So how dare I sit there and, and condemn or ridicule and judge anybody that has any issues with any of that? Because this is how I got over all this is I, I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I first got saved and then I sat there and I said, Lord, I can't do this. I keep jacking it all up. I need your help in a mighty way. That's when he sent me the Holy Spirit. And then he shows, watch this, Jason, y'all you, don't clean people. I'm the cleaner. I'm the one that's going to clean all this crap off of you. And I'm the one that's going to clean it off everybody else. Amen. Life ain't pretty, is it? That's what I get. I get so tired of people judging each other. Because the Bible says we are all jacked. And the only thing that saves us is Jesus. Amen? The only thing that saves us is Jesus. Amen. Y'all stand for me, please. Band, you can come. Pastors, you can come. And I usually, guys, y'all know I'm learning this too. And I, I'm trying to do it right. And I asked the Lord to help me. And He's been telling me I kind of speed up the end too much. But He says that we do have a legal claim to something through Jesus Christ. And that is salvation. 
You cannot be saved without Jesus. Why? You cannot have or partake of a heritage that is of God unless you're part of that family. Amen? It can't be passed down to you unless you know Jesus. Amen? You've got to know Jesus. If you hear anything in this church, I pray that you hear that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the only way to heaven. Amen? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is that narrow gate and that narrow road. I don't know about y'all, but I inherited a whole bunch of stuff. And Lord, show me this lastly. None of this matters, the good or the bad, if you don't have Christ. You have got to have Christ in your life. That's where it starts. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father God, we bow our heads to you right now. And Lord, you know who's saved in here. You know who is not. Lord, you see our hearts right now. Lord, whoever is lost and doesn't know you, Lord, may the Holy Spirit just grab a hold of their heart and just hug them so much. Let them know that you died for all that stuff that they've done and that you love them. Lord, praise God, you said in your word that you will plead through men and women about how much God loves us. But you are a just God and you will never go against your word. So, Lord, may they call out to your name. Lord, you said anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So, Lord, I pray that their heart just rejoices and calls out to you. And if that's you today or you're not sure if you're saved, you say this with me, but only if you mean it. Because the Lord don't listen to trash talk. You say, Father God, I, I thank you for today. And I ask that you forgive me of my sins. And, Lord, I openly invite you into my life. Lord, you said you make all things new. Lord, I want you to make me new. A new man or a new woman, Lord, make me new. Not some little churchy prayer, Lord. I'm serious. I'm tired of living this way. I need your help. Thank you for saving me today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If y'all need prayer, come on. If not, y'all have a wonderful week. Amen. 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 My wish come true. I don't need a four leaf clover or crystal ball to see through. I don't need a claim to fame. Hey guys, thanks again for stopping by the sermon section. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. And I uh, just want you to know you don't have to be in church for the Lord to bless you. He will bless you right where you're sitting or standing right now. And remember that the time of salvation is right now. So if you want to call out to the Lord, you call out to the Lord right now by yourself, wherever you're at, whenever you're doing. Just remember that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's those in Christ Jesus. So I hope you're blessed. I hope you come back to see us. And in Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you. Amen.